Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. Merry Christmas. It's that time of year and we see it and we hear it. I, and to be honest with you, you know, last week, I think that's what ushered me into the, the Christmas season. Children singing at our 1115 service last week, I think that's what did it for me. It, it, it got me started getting ready for Christmas. What is it that gets you ready for Christmas? I know for a lot of people, it's the singing. And if the singing is a part of it, this afternoon at three o'clock, we'll have our Christmas concert and I hope you'll come and be a part of that. Be a lot of singing there. Opportunity for you to sing as well. The singing in Christmas, I think that's one of the best parts of it. Even the greeting of Merry Christmas, it ushers people into say, this is a time that's different. And it's a different practice in, in the way that we, we greet folks. Sometimes it's the singing, sometimes it's the greeting. Other times, yeah, I think it's the smells of Christmas. My wife bakes more this time of year than any other time of year. And the smell of things baking in the house, not only do I like the smell, I like the eating too. And, and she's a good cook. So uh, she likes to cook and I like to eat it. They call that complimentary needs. We, uh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. This time of year, there's the smells, there's the eating, there's the singing, there's the greeting. It's, it's a, or is it the hustle and bustle that gets you ready for Christmas? Trying to find the right gift for the right person, is, is that what does it for you? I know some people get out there and they love to shop. It's, I know for some folks it's a blood sport. They're hunting, they're gathering, they're getting that one thing that they need. And, and it, well, the traffic has already picked up for Christmas. I think the other day I was, I was standing at a, 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 a or waiting in line at a red light. I wasn't standing. I was in my car, and I don't stand in my car very often. Um, the light changed from Christmas red to Christmas green. And I, the, the line didn't move immediately, but I, I think I saw the person in the car next to me give a Christmas greeting, and it was something like, peace on earth, or goodwill toward men. It was something like that. They were gesturing, and I, I'm sure it was some Christmas greeting they were given, because Maybe for you it's the, the hurry, the hustle, the bustle that gets you ready. For Matthew, it's a genealogy. Now, <laughs> he gets us ready for the coming of Christ with a genealogy. And I don't know, let's see if it gets you ready as well. Matthew chapter 1, starting with verse 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. 
to Abraham was born Isaac, to Isaac, Jacob, to Jacob, Judah, and his brothers. And to Judah were born Perez and Zerubbabel, Tamar, and to Perez was born Z- Hezron, and to Hezron, Ram, and to Ram was born Amminadab, and to Amminadab, Nashon, and to Nashon, Salmon, and to Salmon was born Boaz by Rahab, and to Boaz was born Obed by Ruth, and to Obed, Jesse, and to Jesse was born David the king, and to David was born Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah, and to Solomon was born Rehoboam, and to Rehoboam, Abijah, and to Abijah, Asa, and to Asa was born Jehoshaphat, and to Jehoshaphat, Joram, and to Joram, Uzziah, and to Uzziah was born Jotham, and to Jotham, Ahaz, and to Ahaz, Hezekiah, and to Hezekiah was born Manasseh, and to Manasseh, Amon, and to Amon, Josiah, and to Josiah were born Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon, and after the deportation to Babylon, to Jeconiah was born Shealtiel, and to Shealtiel, Zerubbabel, and to Zerubbabel was born Abayud, and to Abayud, Eliakim, and to Eliakim, Azor, and to Azor was born Zadok, and to Zadok, Akim and to Akim Eliud, and to Eliud was born Eleazar, and to Eleazar Matan, and to Matan Jacob. And to Jacob was born Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Are you ready yet? Well, if you're not ready, I'll keep on reading. Therefore, now therefore is an interesting thing. Therefore points to all the things before, so that. Therefore, All the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the time of Christ, 14 generations. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. Why all the genealogy if Matthew's just going to say Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit? Why, why point to 42 names I read right there? Why, why 42 names of 14 generations in order to say, and he was born by the Holy Spirit? Well, let's, let's look at it and find out why. The, the, the family tree starts off with Abraham. To Abraham was born Isaac. Now, If you're going to start off with a family tree, Abraham is the strong root that you want. He's called the father of the faith. He's been called a friend of God. And he is the one who made covenant with God. That it's this relationship, this trust relationship that that he has with God. That he listens to God. He talks with God. That he knows the heart of God. And there's a little phrase associated at first, first in the whole of the Bible with Abraham, the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to Abraham. That little phrase, it's all the way through the Bible, the word of the Lord or the word of God. Well, it's not talking about the Bible. It's talking about God. There wasn't a Bible written yet. So when the word of the Lord came to Abraham, that little phrase It's the first time in the whole of the Bible that it's written. And it was because of this covenant. This covenant. To trust God. This covenant where they would talk. Where Abraham would would listen and, and talk. Now there's a strong root. That's the root that you want. And that's the root of this family tree right here. So Abraham was born Isaac. And Isaac Jacob. Now, that's why, where you want to kind of say, well, hold the phone here for just a minute. Jacob, Jacob was a liar. Jacob was a deceiver. His father, father was Isaac, and his father called out his brother's name, his older brother's name. He said Esau, and Jacob's the one who said, here I am. His father said, well, that sounds like, sounds like Jacob, not Esau. So come over here, let me touch you. His father couldn't see well, so he, he wanted to touch his arm. Well, 
his brother Esau, his older brother, had a hairy arm. His arm didn't have much hair on it at all. So he prepared for that and he put an animal skin on his arm. So when his father reached out to touch his arm, he felt all that, that hair from the animal skin. And he said, well, you know, feels like Esau, sounds like Jacob. Come here, let me kiss you. Well, he was prepared for that too. He knew that if he was close enough to kiss, he'd be close enough to smell. So he put on his brother's clothes. And when his father got close enough to kiss him, he said, well, you know, smells like Esau, feels like Esau, must be Esau. Sounds like Jacob, but must be Esau. So he gave him what rightfully belonged to his older brother. He gave him the birthright. He gave him the blessing, which meant that he gave him everything. And what his brother Esau got, well, the Yiddish word is bupkus. He got nothing. He took it. Jacob was a deceiver, a liar. And here he is on the family tree. He goes on to say Judah and his brothers, and Judah were born Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Tamar's a woman. And the family tree doesn't go through the line of the, the woman. The family tree, the bloodline, it, it goes through the line of, of the, the male. And, but Tamar is here. There are only three women listed here as Tamar, Rahab, and, and Ruth. And Tamar, you don't hear many sermons about Tamar. And there's a good reason for that because they'd be X-rated sermons. And I'll go ahead and tell you, it's difficult from here to preach it, uh, an X-rated sermon. It really is. Uh, Tamar, but I also said there's Rahab. That's in verse 6. To Salmon was born Boaz by Rahab. Rahab was a harlot. Well, that's all I'm going to say about that. And then Boaz was Obed by Ruth. Now, Ruth is who you want on a family tree. Ruth was a woman that was known for her faithfulness. She was known for her loyalty. She was known for her love. She is the kind of a person on your family tree that makes you stand a little taller. And you say, well, I hope some of that came out on me. You know, you, you used to hope for that. But now, if ever there was a, a strong limb, Ruth would be that limb. And by Ruth and to Ob, by Obed, by Ruth, and to Obed, Jesse, and to Jesse was born David the king. Now, that's the first one that tells what he did, David the king. Well, we know stories of David. St David has a great story. We know about a boy with slingshot, five smooth stones, and the power of God able to do what an army couldn't do. He slayed Goliath, the giant. And here he is, right here on the, on the family tree. You stand a little taller with David on your family tree. And to David was born Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Doesn't even mention her name. It says, by her. To David was born Solomon by her who was the wife of Uriah. Well, the only story about David wasn't just the story of him and slaying Goliath. There's also the story about David walking on the roof of his palace one afternoon. And he looks down and he sees her, Bathsheba. She was taking a bath. And he said, I'll have her. Bring her on up to the palace. And after the affair, she said, well, maybe you know my husband, Uriah. He's one of your soldiers. Well, now he'd been caught. Here he is enjoying the the safety of the palace. Here he is enjoying the food of the palace. Here he is enjoying the warmth of the palace while one of his soldiers isn't enjoying safety at all. He's in the battle. He's not enjoying the food at all because they're MREs. He's not enjoying the warmth at all because he's out in the elements. So David does the most despicable thing you can imagine. He contacts his generals and it says, put Uriah on the front lines. And in the heat of battle, pull back. And they expect it happens. Uriah is killed in battle. And so then David does something even more despicable. 
He says, well, you know how I love my veterans. I'm looking after my veterans and their family. Bring the widow. Bring Bathsheba on up to live in the palace with me. I'll, I'll watch after her because that's just the kind of magnanimous person that I am. Despicable. Wicked. To David was born Solomon by her. I think this is here to let us know that there's some limbs on this tree that are strong. There's some limbs on this tree, family tree that are broken, and there's some limbs on this family tree that are strong and broken. But it doesn't stop right there. I'm not going to go through all the names here, but it, verse 10, it says, And to Hezekiah was born Manasseh. Now, you would be hard-pressed to find a king that was a worse king than Manasseh. Manasseh worshipped anything that wiggled. He loved his idols. He walked through the fire. He did the witch dance. He was just a horrible, wicked king. And I say you'd be hard-pressed to find a king that was worse, but you could find one that was worse. It was his son, Amon. Amon was killed, such a bad king, he was killed by his own people after two years as king. Now, if the father's bad and the son's worse, this, the grandson must be, there's just no hope for him at all. But that's not what we find. What we find is this son is Josiah. Josiah became king when he was eight years old, and he was more preacher than king, really. He called the people back to a covenant with God. He called people back to a trust relationship with God to rebuild the temple, to follow God, to listen to God. And this is the manger in which Jesus was laid. All this is here to show this is the arena that Jesus was born to. This is the world to which Jesus came. A world, a world where heartache is, is real. A world where suffering is real. A world where sin and brokenness are real. This isn't just Jesus who's come to, you know, a porcelain set of, of, of shepherds that are they're good and getting better. And uh, the world's just getting better and better and more and more wonderful. And we just happen to hit a dip right now. And the, you know, it's a world. It's a world, it's a manger, it's an arena where heartache is real, where suffering is real, where the brokenness of sin is real. And that's the way that Matthew begins his gospel. And for 28 chapters, Matthew lays out the gospel of Jesus Christ. That through the power of his Holy Spirit, Jesus would heal those who were sick. For 28 chapters, he would bring recovery of sight to those who were blind. For 28 chapters, he would give life. He would give forgiveness to those that were broken in sin. And after 28 chapters of, 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 of healing, of recovery, of, of wholeness and forgiveness, you'd think that people would surround him and they'd say, we will follow you wherever you go. We will serve you whatever it takes, that we will worship you no matter what. But that's not what they did. They surrounded him and said, crucify him. Give us Barabbas. And so they nailed him to a tree. And while hanging from the cross, you'd expect him to, to do what people would do. They say, well, if you don't love me, I won't love you. But he lays out the covenant. The covenant that he has with, with you and me is he, he says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. He gives the word of forgiveness for you and for me and to all who will receive it. But that's not all he did. That on the third day he rose from the grave to give us power. Power. Power in the here and now. He came not just to be away in a manger. He came to be here in a heart. 
And he rose from the grave to give that power to you and to me. That in the heartache, through the power of Holy, his Holy Spirit, he gives hope. Not just away in a manger, but here in a heart. Then in the suffering, that he came to bring strength through the power of his Holy Spirit. Through the brokenness of sin, he came to give forgiveness. That Jesus, Jesus came to, to save us, to rescue us from the heartache, from the suffering, from the sin that would destroy us. Not away in a manger, but here, today, in a heart. This morning it may be that when I, I mentioned heartache, it may be that His Holy Spirit gave you a nudge. And you know what heartache is. You know exactly what it is. And it may be that for the first time, you heard that, that word, that Jesus provides hope in the middle of heartache. Or maybe suffering. You know suffering's address. That when you got up this morning, you knew it. But when I mentioned suffering this morning, you felt the nudge. The nudge of His Holy Spirit. That maybe there's, there's a possibility that the power of His Holy Spirit isn't just a way out there somewhere that is here in your heart and it's available to you to give strength, strength you don't have in the here and now. Or it may be that brokenness of sin, you're under its power and you know better than life itself its power that you can't do what you want. You can't do what you know is right. That's why Jesus rose from the grave. Yes, to forget, but also yes, to give power in the here and now. Not just away in a manger, but here in a heart. And you can receive that power. It's not just in a book. It's not just in a manger. It's the power of His Holy Spirit to be alive in, in you and me today. This morning... You know enough to get started. Invite him. Invite him to make his home in your heart today. That you listen for his voice the way that Abraham did. That you begin to follow. The way that Josiah did. That you know the strength of his power that comes through his resurrection. And you might know it in the, in the here and now today. That you might hope, have hope, you might have strength, and you might have forgiveness. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, this day, this time, may these not just be old words away in a manger from a long time ago, but Jesus, we invite your Holy Spirit to live in and through us. May we practice your presence, yes, through the singing. Yes, through the Scripture. Yes, through the worship of you. And even as we smell and every day the, through the breathing, we invite you to make your home in our hearts. This isn't a, something that we, we, we do just every once in a while. Jesus, this is a walk, a journey that you call us to do daily this day, may we know the, your healing strength and get hope, strength, forgiveness. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you wanna see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 11.15 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full 
on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We wanna be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.